Hi, everyone. I'm Kristen Cofield. I'm the founder of The Culinary Cure. I am the lifestyle wellness expert, and I am also the wellness expert at the Pro Age Woman magazine and community. And today, you have downloaded our sleep webinar. We are going to teach you in the next half an hour the little things you can be doing to improve the quality of your sleep and therefore improve the quality of your life. So go ahead, grab a glass of water and get ready for the Pro Age Sleep webinar. So we are going to talk about creating your perfect sleep practice. So deep restorative rest is the foundation of our physical, emotional, and mental wellness. It also affects all forms of our performance in work and life. So sleep, like exercise, eating, mindfulness, it's a practice. And if it's a practice, it means we can measure it and continually improve the quality and quantity of our sleep. So that's the good stuff. That's the exciting stuff. All of our major organs undergo a powerful metabolic detox and reset when we're sleeping. So that's why sleep is really important. We want, as we get older, to regenerate our bodies and brains so they can continue to perform as well as can be expected. So this is called biohacking. It's when we take our little daily lifestyle habits and we tweak them to get us more of the good stuff. So more sleep, less stress, more energy. Um, we we want to like the way we look and feel, and we want to be comfortable in our skin. So the aging process is inevitable, but how we age, we have quite a bit of control over, and it starts with sleep. So when we're asleep, all of our major organs undergo this metabolic detox and reset, and all that metabolic waste ends up in our lymphatic system. So for those of you who don't know, we've all heard about lymph glands, but the lymph glands are located in our body between our skin and our muscles. So we have a lot of lymph glands here on our neck. We have lymph glands along the side of our breasts. We have lymph glands on the inside of our legs. And these lymph glands are gunked up with all that metabolic waste that happened when we were sleeping. So the first thing we want to do when we wake up in the morning is we want to get a little water to help us rehydrate after the fast that occurs during sleep. But we also want to help the body detox in other ways. And we want to set our circadian rhythm for the day. So sunlight matters. So understanding that exposure to light plays a crucial role in triggering the body's internal clock is essential. So as mammals, we use light from the sun to set our circadian cycle for wakefulness, activity, and sleep. So 30 to 60 minutes after waking, we want to get out and get exposure to sunlight. So we've all heard about getting exposure to sunlight, but the reason we want to do it isn't just to develop a little, synthesize a little vitamin D, which is so important for us, but it's also important for signaling that circadian cycle, that sleep-wake cycle. So how you're going to do this is you're going to get outside in that first 30 to 60 minutes of each day. I happen to get up very early, so the sun's not up yet, so I do that a little later, but you're going to sit in natural sunlight for 10 to 30 minutes. Go ahead, grab your lemon water, get outside, you know, take a walk around the block, walk your dog, whatever, but this is going to help stimulate that circadian cycle for the day. And guess what? Light at the end of the day matters too. This is really interesting. The light from the sun is color-coded. So the light in the morning of each day 
sends different signals through our eyes to our brain than the light at the end of the day. So that natural sunlight helps the body stimulate vitamin D, which is so important for all of our health. Vitamin D is actually a hormone. So it's really important to stimulate the body so it synthesizes or makes some of that vitamin D. And it's also important to get outside and look at those natural colors coming off the sun because that's gonna set our circadian rhythm for the day. So how many of you out there get up and the first thing you do is you get on your phone or you get on your computer, you start checking your email. Don't do that. Save the first hour of each day for you. Save that first hour of creating your intentions for the day, setting your circadian cycle for the day, um, and getting yourself hydrated and ready for the day. So mornings matter. And what else happens during the morning is that we actually end the fast that occurs during sleep with some water to hydrate. And if we're really, you know, wanting to opti optimize that, we're going to boost it with some electrolytes or maybe a little Himalayan pink sea salt. But we're also going to get that exposure to the sunlight to trigger our circadian cycle. And we're going to do a little bit of movement because that's going to raise our internal body temperature. So think about this. When you go to sleep, we need to lower our body temperature to reach that deep, effective sleep state. But when we wake up, we want to raise that body temperature, okay? One of the ways we can do that is by taking a cold shower. You say, is that even a thing? It is a thing. So when you take a cold shower, guess what? Your body compensates for the coldness by warming you up. So taking, maybe not a whole cold shower, but taking a, a shower and ending with a cool rinse will help to raise your body temperature and make you feel more awake for the day. Plus that cold water is a little bit bracing and that feels kind of good. Um, you can also turn around and let the cold water run down your back from the top of your head back. And that will stimulate your vagus nerve. So the vagus nerve runs the length of your spine, and it is one of the body's amazing internal communication systems. So stimulating the vagus nerve helps stimulate your brain for the day and, and help get you going. So also a little bit of movement can raise your body temperature. And here is a great tip for your mornings level up your caffeine. So very often I hear from women that they wake up, the first thing they do is go and get a cup of coffee. They get a cup of coffee to start their day. Mm -mm, mm -mm. We do not want to be doing that. And there's a couple of reasons. One, that caffeine can really jack up your adrenal system when you're having an empty stomach. And two, we want to rehydrate because remember, all of our major organs underwent that metabolic reset when we were sleeping and our lymphatic system is gunked up with that metabolic waste. So the first beverage of each day shouldn't be coffee. It should be water to help us rehydrate. But caffeine is actually really good for us. Caffeine is something called a nootropic. It stimulates our brain in beneficial ways, which is very exciting. Um, and different caffeinated beverages have different nootropic benefits. So green tea is also a nootropic, but it's got different benefits than coffee does. So when we drink green tea, we find very often we have more focus. And sometimes if we drink too much coffee, we can get a little jittery. But here's your hack. Save that cup of coffee or green tea or black tea for an hour to 90 minutes after you wake up. Because guess what? 
you don't need a cup of coffee to make your bed and get dressed and maybe put on your makeup and walk the dog. But you do want that cup of coffee when you're getting ready to embark on a task that requires some brain power. So go ahead, think about pushing your caffeine back 60 to 90 minutes after you wake up. And this is going to improve your sleep as well. And you're like, how is that going to improve my sleep? Well, it's going to improve your sleep because now when you have that first cup of coffee, you're really going to use it. You're going to have more focus. It's going to help you with a challenging task, whatever that is, okay? I don't know whether you're, maybe it's a business task. Maybe it's something you want to do for yourself personally, but having that caffeine when you need the focus is going to serve you really well. It's also going to make it so you might not need another cup of coffee. When you drink your coffee too early in the day, you can jack up your adrenals. You can drink your coffee when you don't need the caffeine. It's not really helping you do anything. And now you're going to want a second cup of coffee a little later in the morning, and that can lead to over caffeine consumption. So too much caffeine can actually affect our sleep. The half-life of caffeine is like seven hours. So if you had a caffeinated beverage at noon, it could still be in your system at seven or eight o'clock at night, making it hard for you to relax and get ready for sleep. So level up your caffeine, delay that caffeine consumption and see how that works for you. The other thing is the most important meal of each day is your first meal. So whatever time you decide to consume your breakfast, make sure it contains the trifecta for good energy, fiber, fat, and protein. So your first meal of the day, maybe you're an intermittent faster like I am. Sometimes my first meal might not even be till one o'clock, but it always contains fiber, fat, healthy fat, and good protein. We need to make sure as women that we are getting enough of these three macro ingredients. And the first meal of the day sets the tone for the day. So make sure, and sometimes breakfast doesn't even look like breakfast, right? So make sure your first meal contains fiber, fat, and protein. Um, that is going to kickstart your day with energy. It's going to help you stay fuller longer, and it's going to help to balance your hormones. And we all want to balance our hormones at every age. So one of the things we need to remember is when we start our day with refined carbohydrates or sugar um, or anything like that, too much caffeine, it can trigger a hormone response that we don't want. So we want to balance those hormones getting out of the gate first thing in the morning, fiber, fat, and protein. You can visit me at the Culinary Cure if you want to know what that looks like. I've got lots of recipes, but that is going to help stimulate some cortisol to start your circadian cycle. Cortisol peaks in the morning and it runs on glucose. So if you're going to enjoy some fruit, the morning is the perfect time to do that. So adding a little fruit in that first meal of the day can give you some of that good glucose to fuel you up and help you feel like you've got some good energy. All right. Afternoon support sleep too. Remember how we talked about getting outside in the natural daylight and how the colors and rays from the sun go into our eyes and send a signal to our brain? Well, the same is true in the afternoon. So if you're like me, you might be sitting at a desk all day and I really have to make an effort to get up and walk around the block, stretch my legs, get a little air, but more importantly, get some of that natural sunlight from the afternoon. And that end of the day light is going to tell my brain, hey, it's okay, Kristen, you can, you can slow down. It's time to start to get ready to switch from work mode to rest mode. 
So getting outside in the afternoon is as important as getting that morning sunlight. So take a little calming break also in the afternoons. For many of us, our days are busy, personally, professionally, whatever our commitments are, we go, go, go. As women, we tend to try to be all things to all people and it makes for busy days. So adding a calming practice into the afternoons can be super beneficial for setting us up for a good night's sleep. And it doesn't have to be a two hour meditation or yoga class. It can be as simple, it can be prayer, it can be heart math. If you don't know what heart math is, um, you can get the app on your phone and you can get a, um, a device that measures your heart rate and you just can hook up to that and get a little biofeedback. You might wanna do some nidra yoga or meditation or maybe a little short cat nap. So napping is a real skill. I never learned how to nap, but I can take a good 15 to 20 minute um, relaxation where I do a little bit of breathing. And what I find and what you will find too is that when you build in a little bit of a break to your day, you can come back and jump back in to some other projects that you want to finish later in the day. So the next thing we're going to talk about are sleep conditions. So setting the right conditions for a good night's sleep makes all the difference. You would be amazed at how many little things you don't think about might be hijacking your sleep. And as pro-age women or women who want to biohack our health so that we can you know, live our most active and fulfill, fulfilled lives, we need to make sure we're setting up the right conditions to help us achieve that deep restorative rest. So the body and the brain need to both drop, get ready for this, one to three degrees in temperature to help us reach and stay in that deep sleep state. So remember earlier when we were talking about how important mornings are and that if you take a shower in the morning and you finish with a cold rinse, you're actually raising your body temperature because by cooling your body, your body compensates and heats you up. So it raises your body temperature. Well, the same is true at night, which is why a warming bath or shower can help you lower your body temperature. So that warming bath or shower um, before bed can help you bring your body temperature down. Remember, we've got to get our body and brain down one to three degrees for us to reach and stay in that deep sleep state. And uh, we need our rooms to be cool, dark, and quiet. So what that means is you might need to set the thermostat right down there to between 64 and 67 degrees to help your body get into that deep sleep state. For a lot of us, that seems kind of crazy, but if you haven't tried it yet, you need to. The other thing is you could try a cooling mattress cover or cooling sheets, which can be helpful. Um, <laughs> you also want to be well hydrated. So I'm going to take a little sip of water here. If you're not well hydrated, guess what? You're going to wake up in the night because your brain is 80% water and it needs to be well hydrated so that it can go through all those metabolic detoxes. All right, so we talked about cool. Now let's talk about dark. If you don't have darkening shades in your bedroom, the easiest way to make your room darker is with a sleep mask. So you can get on Amazon a, a sleep mask. You can go to theculinarycure.com and in my, my Amazon store, you'll see the one I use. It's got padding around it so it doesn't actually press on my eyes. It actually rests on my cheekbones and my forehead. It's very comfortable. I take it with me everywhere but it is blackout dark. 
So cool, dark. So maybe you could try some darkening shades, but your least expensive and easiest way is with a sleep mask. The other thing is, if you've got a light up clock in your bedroom, it's got to go. The light that comes off things like computers, um, clocks, televisions, it affects us. So if you've got a television in your bedroom, I would recommend you get it out. Your bedroom is for two things, sleep and sex. So if you're watching TV in your bedroom, if you're fiddling on your phone when you're in bed, these are all things that can be lighting up the neurons in your brain and making it harder for you to get that deep restorative rest. So that's dark and skip the night lights. You don't even need a night light. And for a lot of people, I recommend putting your phone to bed an hour before you want to go to sleep. So turn your phone off. Remember we talked about the morning, guard that first hour. Don't jump into email or your social media because now you're in somebody else's to-do list. But at night, put your phone to bed an hour before you wanna fall asleep. That'll get you off the screen so you're not looking at the blue light that's lighting up your brain, but it's also a good practice. So read a paper book, uh, get a white noise machine, you know, do something else that's part of your bedtime routine. Oh, and here's another one. Don't ever wake up in the middle of the night and look at your phone. That will just make you more awake. Your alarm is set. You know what time you're getting up. You don't have to worry about it. You don't need to be looking at the clock at night. If you wake up, you wake up. Just shut your eyes. Try to go back to sleep. Okay, so we talked about cool. We talked about dark. And now we're going to talk about quiet. Your room needs to be quiet. I live in an urban setting, and it's kind of noisy. So I use soft foam earplugs. They are inexpensive. You can travel with them. Um, some people find them uncomfortable. So here's a little hack. You can just trim them down with a little pair of scissors. You just roll them up and then you insert them in your ear and they expand. And it literally muffles the sound. So my husband can still be talking to me and I can hear him but it muffles sound enough that it can help you get a deeper, more restorative rest. So make sure your room is quiet. Maybe you need a white noise machine. That can, that can really be helpful. Um, some people just say, oh, you know, I have a fan. I keep it on in my room. That can be helpful because it can help you be cool and create that white noise. But you want your room to be cool, dark, and quiet. You want to get your TV out of your bedroom. You don't want to be sitting on your laptop in bed. Make sure your bedroom is reserved for sleep and sex. So the next thing we're going to talk about is sleep disruptors. So our modern lifestyle has interfered to the point that sleeplessness is actually considered a lifestyle hazard, right? Sleeplessness is a lifestyle hazard that is linked to accelerated aging. So as pro-age women, we want to be biohacking our habits, making sure that we are optimizing our sleep and our nutrition, our hydration, using fasting to help us actually become the healthiest version of ourselves as we age. So here are some of the sleep disruptors that are the most common. Caffeine after three o'clock in the afternoon. All your beverages after three should be, I would encourage you to make sure they are non, they are caffeine free or non-caffeinated. Avoiding alcohol. Alcohol, many people feel as though alcohol may help them sleep, but that's a fallacy. Alcohol actually stimulates our liver at 2 a.m. when we're in that deep rest and wakes us up. So alcohol is a double toxin. It is a toxin when we consume it, but the byproduct of processing alcohol in our liver creates secondary toxins. 
So be careful with alcohol. It actually affects your sleep in a negative way. It does not enhance sleep. And save it for when you really want to enjoy a glass of wine or a margarita. But don't use alcohol as a sleep aid because it has the opposite effect. So be very careful with alcohol. Avoid late afternoon lengthy naps. So we talked about taking a little restorative break in the afternoon, maybe a little quick lie down, maybe a little prayer or meditation or nidra yoga, but no napping over about 30 minutes. If you get into a 90 minute nap, you're now into your restorative rest. So a, any naps over about an hour will affect the quality of your sleep. It'll make it harder to go asleep, stay asleep, um, and get that deep restorative rest. Avoid overhead fluorescent lights. This is a really big one and people don't think about this. So for people, if you work in a place that has fluorescent lights, um, I do recommend using blue light blockers, um, but fluorescent lights actually light up the neurons in your brains. So if you go grocery shopping at night, and I know some people do because they find that's a less crowded time, just know that exposure to fluorescent lights can actually make it harder to fall asleep and stay asleep and get that deep restorative rest. Too little exercise. Mm exercise. Here is the great thing about exercise. The more we do it, the better it is for us. And exercise helps us be younger at a cellular level. Whoa. So exercise is so important. It helps us um, get tired, <coughs> need a little more water. Don't forget to hydrate. Exercise helps um, helps our muscles detox from toxins that accumulate in our body. So it helps us, our body detox. Um, it helps make us more tired and it is a great way to relieve stress. So make sure you're getting enough exercise and that can be as simple as walking or going up and down stairs. It doesn't have to be a gym membership. Uh, too much stress. So stress is a real problem in our modern lifestyle and managing stress is really important. Managing stress, we need to make sure that the food we're eating is helping to lower our stress, that we are supporting a healthy microbiome, that we are staying well hydrated, and that we have some, we're getting enough exercise and that we have a practice for managing our, our stress. So whether that's meditation or biofeedback or prayer or yoga, just make sure you have some thing that you do to help you manage stress and that you're eating a diet that also helps to manage stress because a diet with too much refined sugar, processed foods, artificial ingredients, uh, refined carbohydrates, these ultra processed foods create low level inflammation in our bodies that is also linked to the stress we feel. Um, so again, eliminating the sugar, the refined carbohydrates, the artificial ingredients and the processed foods will help us lower our stress. So 2 a.m. wake-ups. Hmm. Everybody talks about the 2 a.m. wake-up. What is that all about? Sometimes we have to go to the bathroom. Sometimes we just wake up. So here's a thing. Here's another little hack. Sometimes what happens is our blood sugar dips at in the night, and that actually wakes us up because when our blood sugar dips, our body temperature goes back up. So trying a little healthy snack before you go to bed can help balance your blood sugar throughout the night. So what does a healthy snack look like? It might be something as simple as a handful of nuts or maybe half a banana with a little nut butter or a yogurt without added sugar, but fiber, fat, and protein in a little healthy snack before you go to bed might just be the thing if you consistently wake up at 2 a.m. Um, and that can help, you know, even just a glass of milk can be helpful. So those were some of the sleep disruptors that we want to be aware of. 
And I'm just going to throw in a few more supplements and tips that you can use to improve your sleep and create your own perfect sleep practice. So one of the favorite supplements that I recommend is magnesium. Every cell in our body uses magnesium. Magnesium is remarkable. And we want to make sure we're getting enough magnesium, but not too much. So we should be getting magnesium through our diet. But unfortunately, our modern farming practices um, mean that we're not getting as many minerals in our fruits and vegetables as our parents did. Well, that's not good news. Also, our water, most of us are drinking processed water water that has been processed in the municipal processing plant so it doesn't have the minerals and electrolytes in it that water coming out of the earth would. So magnesium is actually one of the electrolytes. So here's what electrolytes are and what they do. Electrolytes are the minerals and salts that create ions in our body when they react with things like blood and urine and sweat. So those ions create either a positive or a negative charge. And that's why they're called electrolytes. These are electric charges in our body that stimulate all of our metabolic processes. So it's very important that we're getting these minerals and salts that are considered electrolytes. And magnesium is one of the electrolytes that we need. We probably need most of us more of. So you can supplement with magnesium. I recommend magnesium glycinate. It is very easy to absorb. It does not, some magnesium can um, stimulate bowel movements and we don't really want that at night when we're trying to go to sleep. So you can add some magnesium glycinate before you go to bed maybe start with 400 um, milligrams and see if that helps you. I do not recommend taking multiple supplements for sleep at one time because then you don't know what's actually working. So start with magnesium glycinate, 400 milligrams, see how that goes. You can also try inositol powder. So myo inositol is a B vitamin and you can try adding um, a little inositol powder to your water throughout the day. It helps to, to calm us down. Maybe a quarter of a teaspoon um, once or twice a day in water. And many people find that that's very helpful for helping them reach and stay in that deep sleep state. There are other things you can do like sipping herbal teas. One of my favorite is chamomile and I make a medicinal dose. So what I do is I take two tea bags. I take about 10 ounces of hot water. I, tea, I steep the tea bags and then I drink the tea. So this chamomile is known for its relaxing qualities, but there are other teas that help you sleep. Ashwagandha, lavender tea. Um, so try herbal teas not too close to bedtime because you don't want it waking you up at night to go to the bathroom, but just enough to calm you down <clears throat> and help you get that deeper sleep. I also have a recipe for a moon tea latte. And what I love about this is you can get the recipe at theculinarycure.com. And I think we'll include it in one of the emails um, after this webinar so you can try it. But Moon, a moon tea latte is nice because you use a little bit of nut milk, which gives you some protein, and there are some other herbs and spices in it that help you achieve a deep sleep. So it does the double purpose of helping you relax, but also helping you get a little bit of protein before you go to bed in that nut milk, which can alleviate sometimes that 2 a.m. wake up. Okay, and finally, some general suggestions that you can use to create your pro-age sleep practice. Blue light blockers are so important. If you spend a lot of time looking at screens, whether it's on your phone or your computer or even your television, 
I highly recommend using blue light blockers. They're going to block some of that blue light that's lighting up and overstimulating your neurons. And that is an inexpensive and helpful way to achieve that deep sleep state and, you know, minimize, you know, some of these things that, you know, just might be getting in the way that you don't even realize. Guess what? You need brand new pillows every two years. So if you've got some old janky pillows that you love and you don't know how old they are, it's probably time to get some new pillows, some new uh, liners to put over your pillows before you put your pillowcase on them. Uh, you need a new mattress every 10 years. This is a funny thing. We are willing to spend money on all kinds of things, and yet people can be very uh, concerned about investing in a good mattress. You are going to spend at least five to eight hours a night in bed every night. Invest in a good mattress that's comfortable and you will get better sleep that will give you more energy. So every 10 years, a new mattress. And your mattress cover should be washed every month. So wash your mattress cover every month. Everybody can do that. That's easy peasy. Um, and if you're having trouble falling asleep, which many people do, I recommend that you find a nice spot where you can get your feet up on the wall. So it's gonna be like this. These are your feet, uh, these are your feet, and this is your head and back. So get your feet up on the, the wall. So for those of you who may do yoga, um, this is an inverse pose. And what it does is it helps bring blood to your brain. And what that does is it helps calm your parasympathetic nervous system. So this can make it easier for you to fall asleep. So just try getting your feet up on the wall for, you know, maybe start with five minutes and work up to 15 before you want to get into bed for the evening. And that can really help calm you down. And be sure to also, if you're going to add some of the supplements like the magnesium um, or the inositol, go ahead and just run that by your physician um, if you have any concerns about that. So that is how we are going to wrap up our pro-age wellness webinar, uh, talking about creating your perfect pro-age sleep practice. I'm going to give you a quick recap. Deep restorative rest is the foundation of our physical, emotional, and mental wellness and all forms of performance in, in life. So light matters, morning matters, afternoons can support that deep restorative rest, creating the right sleep conditions, cool, dark, and quiet conditions are crucial for achieving that deep sleep state. Eliminating sleep disruptors because our modern lifestyle is filled with them and they interfere with our sleep. And sleeplessness is a lifestyle hazard that actually accelerates the aging process. And don't forget, there are those sleep disruptors. So remember, no caffeine after three, avoid alcohol most nights, no late afternoon naps, too much screen time is not a good thing, manage your stress. And you can try the supplements like magnesium and um, inositol and get yourself some blue light blockers. Blue light blockers are inexpensive and they can really help. So if you found this webinar helpful, please let us know. Reach out to us at the Pro Age Woman magazine and community. Reach out to me at The Culinary Cure. We really want to make sure that we're creating content that supports your best life. And we've got something really exciting coming for you at the beginning of next year. And that is the Pro Age Wellness Reset. So we are going to be creating, we are in the process of creating a program to teach you all the ways that you can be biohacking your little daily habits to create optimum conditions for restorative wellness and so that you can actually activate your body's own healing capabilities. So we want everybody to use the things that they can in their own environment to be healthier, happier, 
and pro and pro age because pro aging is the best way to live right now. Thank you so much.